What's up guys? Welcome to my very first um, drawing tutorial. My name is Bailey and you'll be drawing bubbles with me today. I'm not the inventor of this drawing activity. I found this tutorial on YouTube and I kind of made my own little spin on it. I actually taught this as a lesson in my advanced art class and the kids loved it. So I hope you guys like it too. Pick up a pencil, get some drawing paper and let's do this. You don't need a whole lot of materials. You need some form of black drawing surface. This is literally just a scrap of old mat board that I used for framing that I had in my closet. But you can use black construction paper, black drawing paper. Um, yeah, anything black will work. So I'm using Prismacolor pencils today. If you have like Crayola pencils, Crayola pencils work okay for this. Um, but if you're really going for that bright, vivid color payoff, especially with whites, you'll want um, some Prismacolors to work with. And you don't need like a bazillion colors for this, like a 12 count or even the 24 counts really good for this. So I recommend Prismacolors. You can use whatever you want, just colored pencils. So to start, I'm just going to, I already have my bubbles drawn just because I already set this up yesterday. But if you take a compass, this is just a cheap little plastic one, I think it was like 20 cents. <laughs> you can draw yourself a perfect circle. If you don't have access to a compass, just find something round. Find a cup, find a roll of tape, find, I don't know, or just wing it. There's nothing wrong with winging it. Okay, so the first pencil you're going to use after you've drawn kind of that um, starter circle with graphite you're just going to go in with your white pencil and I just like to enhance a couple sections of my border with white. Just kind of give it a little bit of a reflection to start. So just pick some parts on your edge. Again, you can do this wherever. Yours does not have to match mine. I told my kids that um, bubbles are kind of like snowflakes, right? They're not exactly the same. If your marks are a little bit different than mine, your bubble's still probably gonna look awesome. So just throwing a couple of these on there. Let's slide this over. And kind of vary, vary the size a little bit too. Like you don't wanna have like a giant white ring. Like you don't wanna go all the way around. Make some kind of longer ones. If you want, you can kind of fade it in a little bit with your white. Draw kind of with the side of your pencil. Um, I always talk to my kids about like holding your pencil like an artist as opposed to like a writer. Writers always hold their pencils really tight and they like really grip it. But if you move your hand back on the pencil a little bit and kind of rest it on its side, your pressure kind of alleviates and you're able to actually have a little bit more drawing control. So I'm going to do probably one or two more of these little ones over here. We'll probably go over most of these with color later. It's just kind of the setup. Okay, we'll call that good for the outside. And then the next thing we did was we went through and we did just kind of these striped highlights. We're not going to quite go in for the big guns quite yet, but just kind of around the outside, we worked on doing kind of linear, linear shadows. And what makes these successful, not shadows, highlights, sorry. What makes these successful is if you kind of follow the curve of a bubble. Like you don't want to have like a big solid square highlight right there. You want it to curve around and kind of show the viewer that, hey, this surface is round. So throw in some of those skinnier linear, skinnier linear highlights. Um, do some big ones, do some like short wispy ones. Do some that are kind of square to begin with and then taper off. Anything works for this. Okay, I sped up this part of the video just to kind of save some time. So as you're laying in your skinny um, highlights, just make sure you're varying the width. Make some of them a little bit longer. Make some of them a little bit skinnier. Make sure you're following the surface of that um, circle. If you have any little mistakes that you make, like I just made right there, just turn them into those little spots. Nobody will ever notice, and life goes on. So if you need a second, go ahead and pause the video right here, finish your highlights, and we'll move on. So now that we've got kind of the outer ones, let's go in and really do the ones that grab people's eyes 
we're gonna do one kind of in the lower section for this particular bubble I think I might put that one up here kind of do a mirror image of the one that I already have on my paper so I'm gonna do this situation kind of up here I'm gonna do a shape similar to that so you kind of want to just follow the curve of the bubble but kind of make a shape that's a little bit oblong for your little highlight shape lock it in it can be kind of squarey you can make it triangular if you want and then once you're happy with that shape you just fill it in with white contrary to popular belief um, you actually don't have to push super hard with colored pencils to get like really bright vivid payoff the tricks to getting really vivid payoff are number one draw with a sharp pencil this one's not very sharp right now um, keep your pencil sharp that way it gets kind of inside the gaps in like the tooth of the paper like those little textured areas right there and then if you go over a couple times like allow yourself to build up layers with like light to medium pressure on your pencil that actually allows the pigment of the pencil to like lay on top of itself and become a little bit brighter obviously if you push super super hard it'll still go bright and vivid but eventually you're gonna run out of workspace especially if you're like blending colors and stuff like that your prisma colors get really stubborn really fast so I like to go slow and steady building up those colors building up that pigment okay I kind of like that one I'll kind of add like a little stripey one next to it why not okay and then I'm gonna kind of do a lighter color fade I'm probably gonna line this up with some colors later like some bright bright yellows and maybe some pinks I love putting pinks in the bubbles but I'm just gonna kind of I don't know kind of draw like a triangular shape for this and I'm gonna make this one a little bit lighter just kind of laying down a lighter base so I can have vivid colors later. Might look cool. It's really kind of hard to ruin these to be totally honest with you. It's You can use every color that you have in your palette. You can make as many or as little highlights as you want. It's just kind of personal preference. I kind of like that actually. Stretch that one out a little bit longer. Okay, so now I'm going to do one that kind of follows that curve this way. So if we look up at this example one, kind of, we just did this one to lay in a color base for later. And then I'm just going to kind of do a similar shape on this side that we may or may not fill up with color. I'm not sure. We'll kind of see what we're feeling when we get there. But just kind of blocking in kind of like a square squarish slash rectangular shape I kind of like what's going on with that one too so I'm gonna throw kind of a brighter moment right below it why not why not okay kind of like that Now, what do I want to do? Let's do, let's do a highlight over here. Let's get something happening over here. So I'm just going to block this in. This one's going to be a pretty, pretty blocky highlight, I think. I think I'm just going to start here. Get kind of a block shape sketched in. This is probably the last chunky highlight we'll do on the bubble, so if you need a second to pause, um, go ahead and pause right here, lay out the rest of your chunky highlights, get a nice bright white going, and we'll move on. If they could find a way to make Prisma colors mechanical, I think that would change, change the world. Change my world, that's for sure. I hate sharpening pencils. Same with like charcoal. I wish they made like mechanical charcoal. If anybody out there knows where to get freaking mechanical charcoal, you will change my life for the better. Don't get me wrong, I love general pencils, but if there was a mechanical version, oof. I feel like I'd get more work done. I probably wouldn't just because 
I don't. <laughs> Just because I never get work done anyway, but it's fun to pretend. Fun to pretend like you could get more work done if there was just like one magical project or product, I guess. Okay, I kind of like that one. I'm going to stick with that for now. Maybe fade it in a little bit lighter for some brighter color bases. I don't know how that looks right now, but whatever. Okay, um, next, once you're kind of satisfied with the highlights that you've laid down, you're going to go in with like your colors and you're going to start drawing on top of all these white bases that you've set down and uh, really start to give it kind of that soapy, reflective um, feel. Before we move on to that though, I kind of want to show you how to do just like these little bubbly bits right here and then um, these little reflective star things. The kids died over these. They love those. They're like, it looks so real. And it's, it's crazy how easy it is. So what you do is you just take your pencil and you literally just like, you start putting dots down. You put like a little grouping of dots. You vary the size. You put a big dot next to a small dot. You put like maybe a couple dots going after a highlight. You go maybe some there. Maybe there's a big one right in the middle. Don't be afraid to throw some spots on there. Vary the size, make a big one over here. And then we'll make like a little cluster maybe. Let's make a cluster over here. Just like a bunch of them going up to the corner. Why not? Let's put a big one over there too. You can do this with acrylic paint too when you're totally done if you wanna skip this step. Totally can. I'm just too lazy. I don't wanna get my acrylic paints out and wash brushes, my sink's all the way upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so we've got kind of our specks, our spots. Now we want to lay in a couple of these little starburst things. So for mine, where do I want to put mine? I think I want to put one kind of next to this brighter highlight, I think. Let's put it in here. Let's be crazy. Yeah, let's put it like right smack dab in the middle of this. So I'm going to do just another one of those little spot bit thingies. Kind of a bigger one. And then this is the part where it really helps if you have your pencil sharpened. Like I said, mechanical pencils change the market. So what you'll do, you'll take your pencil and very, very lightly, you'll draw a line coming up from that. And I'm kind of doing like a flicking motion. You don't want to like put your pencil on your paper and, paper and just drag it up because it'll make a really flat, um, non-dynamic line is what we call them. So you kind of want to just flick it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need a ruler for this. Just be loose, draw free. So go to the top, go to the bottom. And then same with the side, just kind of flick it. And you can make this as short or as long as you want to. And then once you've kind of got the direction, you can go in there and build, build the base up a little bit. Like when it's coming off of the center, you want that to be really bright, really vivid. And then obviously as it fades out to that point, it can get a little less pigmented. That'll actually look really cool. Okay, so we've got kind of the cross section, the T going. Then you just do like an X with the same motion, kind of that flicking motion. Obviously this one's gonna be a little bit shorter. Don't want this one to be the same size. Okay, and then I always like to do like little, like, little specks coming off. Make them pointy. Flick them out, make them skinny. And it's okay, in fact, I think it's cooler when you have a starburst that kind of goes outside of the bubble, kind of defies that surface. Just travels outside that border. I think those always look so cool. So I've got a really cool one up here that I'm pretty satisfied with. This is like the big one, this is like the big flash. There's obviously some light source kind of flashing through the center of this page, which looks really cool. But now what we can do is we can add some of these just little smaller ones and that really just adds um, a dynamic like reflection to it. So I'm gonna actually just take one of these pre-made dots up here and I'm gonna do a small flick up, small flick down, side side. This one I don't do like a whole lot of extra stuff with just cause you want it to kind of look smaller. 
but that's just I love that and then you can even do tiny ones like if we do let's throw one more down here like a little micro spot just like a little little moment just adds to it I think those are so cool okay let's give the white pencil a rest we might come back to it especially like for blending colors and stuff like that but I think for the most part we've got some pretty sweet highlights laid down so the next pencil I'm gonna grab and the next pencil that I would recommend using is some form of yellow if you're using Prismacolor if you get like the 12 I think the 12 count there's a canary yellow in there the canary yellow works really really nice and then if you have a little bit of a larger set there should be kind of a uh, like an orangey like dandelion looking yellow in there and I love 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 using these colors sunburst yellow I think is the one that comes in the 24 I'm not a hundred percent sure but I love these together so let's start with the one that comes in the 12 pack the canary yellow and I'm just gonna start kind of going over some of these white highlights that I've laid down especially on the outer edges of my bubble so I'm just gonna go to some of these skinnier ones and I'm gonna start laying in some yellow pigment this is what makes Prismacolors kind of stand out from other colored pencils in my opinion is because they build and they blend so easily and they're just so workable like so buildable you can make so many mistakes with Prismacolors and they're just so forgiving they just allow you to kind of keep going so I'm just kind of working from the edge trying to keep my circular shape we don't want square bubbles working from my edge and just kind of feathering in some yellow I'm not afraid to kind of take my yellow like with my artist hand and just kind of drag it in for a little hint like a little hue of yellow coming in don't be afraid to connect highlights either like this one shouldn't be always separate from this one if you kind of drag it in and kind of continue that fade of color the eye really likes to follow that so I like that yellow moment happening there I'm gonna continue it kind of on this side of my highlight be careful with your little starbursts like you don't want to draw colors through those if you can help it but just kind of feathering that in a little yellow moment happening behind it to kind of bring it forward nice and this drawing is like a lot of give and take you'll go you'll draw you'll put all the colors in and then you'll come back and be like oh this needs more yellow here this needs more blue here and that's totally kind of the whole point of this right you just go back and forth Working with black and white as much as I do, I feel like I'm the person that like tries to reach for every single color in my palette. Like every single time I just need to like use the rainbow. If you're a person that's, you know, you want like maybe just a green bubble or just like a blue bubble, like you can do this however you need to. And I think I've said that like 4,000 times in this video, but it's so true. This is such a freeing exercise because there's really not a whole lot of rules. Okay, I like that side. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move over here, kind of down on this diagonal line. So I've got a lot of yellow happening up here. I'm gonna kind of translate it diagonally down here a little bit. I'm actually gonna connect those two highlights and fade some yellow up in here. Remember, artist hand, hold your pencil just super far back. Just allow your pencil to rest on that page and then just guide it up to that next highlight really light hand really soft movements okay right here we'll just finish up the rest of those little yellow bits I'm just still working kind of from the edge connecting some of those linear highlights so if you need a second to finish up your yellow pause right here and then we will move on I think I like that for now so the next color I'm going to reach for is that kind of uh, sunburst yellow that orangey yellow that kind of uh what do i want to say dandelion i just always go back to dandelion i love 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 this color um if you don't have pencils kind of like this go for an orange just kind of like a warm rich um color and i'm just kind of kind of fade that in wherever i kind of want that yellow to get a little bit more vivid a little bit more strong because I don't know what it is about the black paper, but the black paper just really loves showing the color of the warmer yellows. 
this next part I sped up too. If you look, I just take that warmer yellow and I add it into the areas where kind of the lighter yellow just tapers off. And then I took it into the center and did some light shading with my artist hand to kind of give a reflection through the center of that bubble. So I'll take it in the center right here, very, very lightly fade that around and it kind of looks like a cool little reflection through the bubble. So that's, that's basically all I did with the warm yellow. Okay, let's set the yellow down. Let's go for, um, let's go to our blues. I always like this step. So the next color I'm going to reach for is kind of like a lighter blue, like a sky blue. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what's in the 12 count set of prism colors. I want to say, gosh, is it true blue? Electric blue? I can't remember. It's one of these, one of these cerulean crap. Oh well, it's one of these lighter blues. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. Um, but just grab like a lighter sky blue. I think I'm going to rock and roll with, I like electric blue today. Okay, so I'm going to take my blue and I'm just going to kind of, wherever I have my big, my bright, vivid white highlights, I'm going to start to kind of fade those out with a little bit of a blue tone so that they're not just stark, stark white. This actually looks really sweet. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick this part like by my sunburst to be the brightest part of that highlight. I'm just throwing on, I don't know if I love this color, let's try Cerulean, I think I like Cerulean. Yeah, there we go. Very, very light pressure here, light to medium pressure. Again, I want this part to be my brightest, so I'm going to leave that pure white and kind of start this middle section with my blue. You can fade that all the way out to the tail of the highlight if you want to. We'll add a different blue to it in just a second, but you can take it as far as you want. And then, this is the cool part about Prismacolor, is once you have like two colors that you want to start blending together, if you go back with the color that you had originally laid down and you kind of add it to that seam where those two colors come together, they'll start blending for you really nicely. So again, not a whole lot of pressure. I'm not actually like burnishing my paper, which is where you press so hard it like gives it a shiny sheen. Just medium to light pressure, going over the seam of those two colors. And you can kind of make this step go back and forth to get as smooth of a blend as you want. You can do this forever. I kind of like that moment happening right there. I'll leave that alone for a second. And then let's throw, throw some blue on this up here. I like that. We'll throw, I think we need some blue happening over here too. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the middle of this little highlight. this one too. So I'm going to kind of take where I've left it a little bit not as pigmented. Kind of drawing that blue layer in. Super, super light pressure to kind of feather that up too before I blend it. my white, do a little bit of blending. Something that helps with blending too is if you don't necessarily draw like the same direction, like I'm just drawing in like little like circular motions like this, if you do stripes the whole time you're gonna see them. So switch up your, switch up your stroke, go a couple different directions. Again, not super hard pressure. Shouldn't leave this exercise like with carpal tunnel. You shouldn't have to like pause and shake out your wrist because you're dying. Sweet. Love that. Um, I like that. I like this here. We'll probably get some blue coming here in a little bit. Just kind of feather that in to remind myself that I want blue there. <laughs> 
this one here I want blue yeah let's do blue in this we'll do blue and like maybe a little bit of pink later that'll look sweet really light-handed with this one I like that we'll throw some blue kind of happening next to this highlight Blue kind of happening over here, fading into the yellow, making a nice green over here. That looks pretty sweet too. Whenever you're laying down strokes, especially like if you're like just kind of being free and adding pigment into not necessarily highlights, just make sure you kind of follow that curve of the bubble with whatever you add and it'll look awesome. Okay, let's take a break from this blue for a sec. I'm gonna switch over to a darker blue. Now I know that in the 12 count set there is what's called a violet blue. I don't know why they call it violet blue because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous cobalt blue. Where the heck is mine at? Ultramarine, that's close. Yeah, we'll use ultramarine for this, why not? Violet, oh here it is, violet blue. It's not even sharpened because I don't use this one a whole lot. I like this one better, but it looks like this. So now wherever I've got kind of my light blue fading into a big bold highlight, I'm going to take my darker blue on the opposite end and just like I did with the white, kind of feather it in to those ends to kind of give it like that dark faded effect. It looks really sweet. I'm going to add a little bit of blue there. I think I'll carry it over. Do I want to carry it over there? I don't know. I think I want to keep that light for now at least. And then we'll add dark. Yeah, I like this better. You just laid down this white to kind of keep it vivid. If you're drawing with a dark color on top of a dark paper, sometimes the color payoff is not what you want, what you're looking for. So if you lay down that kind of white base, it's easier to kind of get the colors you're looking for faster. Right here, I kind of just continued on adding that dark blue kind of wherever I had that light blue fading out to a darker value. Um, I took it and put it on the edges. I'll put it at the ends of some of these skinnier highlights. Um, don't forget to fade it into your big chunky highlight like I'm doing right here. Um, remember, you can go back and forth with a lighter blue to kind of blend those seams in um, and make it look really, really clean. But I'm just taking it, adding it to the ends of some of these highlights. If you throw some around like the edge, like I'm doing right here, it kind of adds that like spherical shape to it. I think it. I'm going to call that good with the dark blue right now. I like that. I'm going to reach for a violet now. If you have the 12 count, I know there is a violet in there and it is fantastic. It looks like this. This is going to be the darkest shade that we put on here so you don't necessarily want to go overboard with the violet you kind of just want to hint um that it's there so i'm gonna start actually with my violet at the end of this like big chunky highlight that i'll color in later just throwing a little bit of a hint of that over my white that i laid down earlier again avoid that starburst if you can you want that to be really bright and vivid if you run it over with purple that kind of defeats the purpose little bit of yellow or purple there wherever I have like my super dark blue tails of my highlights I like to throw a little bit of purple at the end of those just to give it that like fully like faded effect from like light blue to purple right here I'm just taking my violet wherever I have those dark blues and kind of completing that fade that I started with the lighter blues I'll finish it on that chunkier highlight by the starburst and then I'll carry it down through the rest of that highlight. I'll throw some on the edge. Um, you can throw some by itself if you want, um, but I'm just really light handed with this. I think I like this for now. And if you're probably like, if you're looking at your bubble at this point, you're like, what the heck? It's like, it's not coming together. It's not like really doing it for me. That's okay. <laughs> because. Until I started doing like my greens and my pinks like this stuff right here, I, it wasn't really believable for me either. So if you're kind of like in between a rock and a hard place right now, um, number one, you're a true artist because I feel like you can't be an artist if you don't go through artist block. 
And number two, um, just wait till we do greens and pinks before you give up, because this is this is a sweet part. Okay, so in the 12 count of Prismacolors, there is an apple green. I'm going to grab that for this next part. And wherever I have kind of like a yellow close to a blue, I'm going to give it kind of that tinge of green. I don't know what it is about green, but green just gives it that soapy effect. It kind of gives, I don't know, it's just green changes it for me. And I hope it does for you guys too if you're frustrated. Just be patient. So I'm just kind of fading green into the edge here, very, very lightly bringing it into the center like that. Um, if you have any highlights that are like just yellow and then it like fades into nothing, throw some green in there. Your highlights don't all have to be white. In fact, it's cooler if they're kind of colored sometimes. Yeah, there we go. Throw some green there. Throw a little bit of brighter hue there. Throw some green in between this yellow and blue moment. Love the turquoise that the light blue and green start to make. So pretty. I'm probably like sitting here telling you guys that green's awesome and then I'm just gonna like go overboard with green and end up hating this. <laughs> it's alright. Happens. This will be my sixth bubble that I've drawn today. So far they've all turned out pretty sweet. I've hated a couple of them like midway through though, so hopefully this one avoids that stage. Right here I just finish out these highlights over here. I add some green to the top of that one and I actually connect these two side highlights right here, which I think helps it a lot. Oh yeah. The green is making it for me. I don't know why. And I don't care. If green's not making you a believer, just wait till pink. Pink's crazy. Okay, love that. <clears throat> Sweet, okay. Um, Next color I'm gonna reach for, we keep talking about it, so we might as well just freaking dive in and roll with it. I absolutely love this purple. It's kind of, it's this color right here, and it so does not even look like purple. It looks like magenta, and it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This one, unfortunately, is not in the 12 count set. This one, you gotta, I think you gotta buy at least the 24 to get this color. If you have the 12 count set, the way that you can kind of cheat this is if you pick up your white, and I know that there is a red, if you lay down kind of like a wider base, like we did with some of these highlights, and then you very, very lightly go over with red, and then you go over it again to blend it out with white, you'll kind of get like that pinky hue that I'm going to show you right here. But I'm I'm lazy. We're just going to go straight into it. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with mulberry, actually. I love, love, love mulberry. It's kind of a pinky hue. But yeah, this changes it too. It's crazy. So I'm going to throw some pink, I'm gonna throw, I think I'm going to throw pink here, here and here, we'll kind of make them opposites. This one is like the most versatile color because you can put it next to a yellow and it'll make like a really gorgeous, uh, gorgeous like rusty, um, rusty reddish orange color. You can put it next to a purple and it'll just make like a really bright vivid purple. You can put it next to um, this light blue and it's just, it's just pretty. It's just a good color to use. I'm 
just now. Sort of hint of it going through this yellow. Let's get brave. Pick some colors that who knows what it'll look like. Okay. Kind of dig that actually. Just winging it. Fake it till you make it. That's what I always tell my freaking kids. Because you're so terrified of art because you're like, I'm not good at art, I can't do it. Well, just try. Try and fail. That's why people don't do art. Because you're scared to fail. You fail all the time. Not successful, per se, but just keep going. I feel successful sometimes. You gotta fail. You gotta allow yourself to fail. I love the pink. I don't know why. What does it do? It's magic. It's so cool. I could sit and draw on this stupid bubble for like four hours. This tutorial is going to be like four days long. I'll try to speed it up for you guys with time lapse as much as I can. As much as I know that you want to just sit and listen to my wonderful voice talk for four days i'm gonna reach for an orange now probably just a regular old regular regular orange let's throw let's throw this guy let's throw it right here let's make this crazy crazy highlight i'm not gonna go overboard with orange i'm gonna be very light-handed with this one a little bit too much fun with the pink to reel it back in a little bit. You can skip this step too if you're not like super drawn to the orange. If you're looking at it and you're like, that does not scream bubble to me. Which, I don't know. Is there orange in bubbles? There's orange in this bubble. Somebody's gonna go like Google a picture of a freaking bubble and be like, look, there's three colors in it. You did it wrong. Who cares? This is a cool bubble. Doesn't care what you think. Oh, I like the orange next to the blue. Fun. Nice. It's getting there. It's getting there. I think I think I want to add a little bit more yellow. I've lost my yellow a little bit. And then we'll finish it off with some turquoise and probably call this bad boy done. Okay, so I reached for my warmer yellow again. You can go back to Canary if that's what you're working with today. Just gonna try and make some of these yellows a little bit more vivid with one more layer. One more layer of brightness. Help them stand out a little bit. There we go. I actually kind of want a bright vivid yellow right there. Okay, there we go. That's fun. Okay, there we go. I like that. I like that. There we go. There's the yellow. It's so dumb how just like one one mark will change it for you. It does for me. Simple pleasures in life, just my friend. Okay, love that. Let's go down here. Let's do that down here. Get this one nice and bright. Let's see if we can get it bright. I want to throw some light over it. Okay. Love that. Some yellow over this highlight here. Fade it into that green. Nice. There we 
too. I'm really just using the yellow to like blend right now. I'm not necessarily like adding a whole lot of like new color, but anywhere that I've kind of been light handed, I'm just going over again with like that medium to light pressure, blending things together, making everything like a little bit more vivid and covered. For the next little bit right here, I just go back and forth between my lighter yellow and my bright white to kind of finish off that highlight right there. I'll make the end of it like pure white and then I'll fade it down into those yellows that I've been working with. Um, it's really just like a balancing act going back and forth with your yellows, fading seams with the white and just trying to make it look as clean and crisp as possible. Um, remember the way that you get that is by keeping your pencils sharp drawing with that medium to light pressure um so yeah you'll notice right here i just kind of switched to white and i'm just blending making things look smooth it's so crazy that like white over the top of it like even though you have you've got like highlights laid down it'll just kind of like bring it back to life bring it forward and just make it jump for you it's so cool <sighs> i freaking love prism colors Right here we just continue working with the white, um, blending seams, adding a little bit of pop to some of those highlights that have maybe faded into the background, crisping up any edges that have maybe gone a little soft on us. I love the way that the white brings this highlight back to life right here. It was just completely fading in the background for me and it's just, there it is. It's right back where it was. So refine anything, kind of do your last finishing steps with white right here. And we'll move on. I don't know how much of a fan I am of this like little boom thing over here. I think it needs to be lightened a little bit. Oh, that's the blue we needed to right there. I don't know if you saw what just happened. Yeah, my friend is what we call matchmaking. Just had that like really hideous seam of dark blue, which you may or may not be able to see, but I can see it. And so you know what? We're gonna fix it. See him up here, really hating that scene. I forgot to tell you guys this part because I'm a super awesome tutorial guru. I am blending all of these with that lighter cerulean blue from earlier. So reach back to that sky blue, that light blue, um, whatever one you have in your palette to blend all this stuff together. Get rid of uh, any of those dark um, blue seams that are kind of bugging your eyes out. I love this color. I'm sorry if you don't have this one. This is cobalt turquoise. This is in... Oh gosh, I want to say this is in the 78 count. Maybe it's this one, Aquamarine. Either one of these are just freaking gorgeous. In fact, I think I'll use Aquamarine because it's a little bit lighter. Brighten some things up. So I'm taking the turquoise right here, and this is kind of the blending color I'm using for my blues and my greens anywhere. I have like a barrier of where a blue and a green kind of come together or anywhere that I have just like really really light green um, laid down from earlier that I kind of want to transition into like a bluish tone I'm taking that turquoise just kind of layering it on the top um, hinting it in some of those highlights like you see right here but it's really just I'm taking um, taking that turquoise and filling in that paper just making those colors really pop really be um, blended well. I love using this color. I just think it's so gorgeous, especially just for blending purposes. I think it's just a really buttery, nice color to use. So I'll kind of blend all those greens and then I'll kind of fade it up on this side right here using that really light touch, that really um, feathered touch with the artist hand and kind of the same on this side as well, just giving those like little hints of color. We fill on a tiny bit more pink. We can call this bad boy done. I'm gonna go back in with that 
mulberry from earlier. Finish out some of these blends, make them look sick. Gonna help out my orange that I've got going on right here. I don't really know what's happening. Go back over that purple with white in a second. Brighten this up. Remember guys, medium to light pressure. Don't need to freaking draw all the way through the page right now. These are finishing touches. I think Alrighty guys I think we made it I mean obviously we could keep going back and forth and adding colors and blends and whites and all sorts of stuff like that, which you're more than welcome to do. But now you've got kind of the basics. You know how to draw a bubble. You know how to make it turn out pretty sweet. Um, I hope you found this helpful if it was just like the most annoying tutorial you've ever watched. I'm so sorry. It's my first one. <laughs> This is my first one, and if it totally sucks, we'll probably never make another one. But if you liked this, if this was helpful to you, let me know. Give me a comment. Send me a picture of the bubbles that you make. I have a picture of the bubbles that my students made on my Facebook page. And it, it was just such a fun day. So show me your stuff. Show me what you come up with. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, let me know. Let me know if these bad boys are game changers for you. All right. Thank you guys for watching this video. Here's a picture of the bubbles that my students drew. They turned out awesome. They only had 20 minutes to draw those. So that's pretty darn good for 20 minutes. We just spent an hour drawing on ours. So if you liked this video, make sure you give my Facebook page Bateman Studio a follow and share this video with your friends. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.